Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles. This is the Foundation for Inner Peace, 3rd Edition. We are currently on page 173. We are in Chapter 9, The Acceptance of the Atonement, and this is Section 6, The Acceptance of Your Brother. If you would like to join me in prayer. Dear Father, Please allow me to set aside everything that I think I know for an open mind and a new experience. Please help me to set aside all ideas I have, all opinions, all judgments about everything in this world, including today's reading, myself, my brother, and you, God. And so it is. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and start with section six, the acceptance of your brother. How can you become increasingly aware of the Holy Spirit in you except by his effects? You cannot see him with your eyes nor hear him with your ears. How then can you perceive him at all? If you inspire joy and others react to you with joy, even though you are not experiencing joy yourself, there must be something in you that is capable of producing it. If it is in you and can produce joy, and if you see that it does produce joy in others, you must be dissociating it in yourself. It seems to you that the Holy Spirit does not produce joy consistently in you only because you do not consistently arouse joy in others. Their reactions to you are your evaluations of His consistency. When you are inconsistent you will not always give rise to joy, and so you will not always recognize his consistency. What you offer to your brother, you offer to him, because he cannot go beyond your offering in his giving. This is not because he limits his giving, but simply because you have limited your receiving. The decision to receive is the decision to accept. If your brothers are part of you, will you accept them? Only they can teach you what you are, for your learning is the result of what you taught them. What you call upon in them, you call upon in yourself. And as you call upon it in them, it becomes real to you. God has but one Son, knowing them all as one. Only God himself is more than they, but they are not less than he is. Would you know what this means? If what you do to my brother you do to me, and if you do everything for yourself because we are part of you, Everything we do belongs to you as well. Everyone God created is part of you and shares his glory with you. His glory belongs to him, but it is equally yours. You cannot then be less glorious than he is. God is more than you only because he created you, but not even this would he keep from you. Therefore, you can create as he did, and your dissociation will not alter this. Neither God's light nor yours is dimmed because you do not see. Because the sonship must create as one, you remember creation whenever you recognize part of creation. Each part you remember adds to your wholeness because each part is whole. Wholeness is indivisible, but you cannot learn of your wholeness until you see it everywhere. You can know yourself only as God knows his Son, for knowledge is shared with God. 
When you awake in him, you will know your magnitude by accepting his limitlessness as yours. But meanwhile, you will judge it as you judge your brothers and will accept it as you accept his. You are not awake yet, but you can learn how to awaken. Very simply, the Holy Spirit teaches you to awaken others. As you see them waken, you will learn what waking means. And because you have chosen to wake them, their gratitude and their appreciation of what you have given them will teach you its value. They will become the witnesses to your reality as you were created, witness to God's. Yet when the sonship comes together and accepts its oneness, it will be known by its creations, who witness to its reality as the Son does to the Father. Miracles have no place in eternity because they are reparative. Yet while you still need healing, your miracles are the only witnesses to your reality that you can recognize. You cannot perform a miracle for yourself because miracles are a way of giving acceptance and receiving it. In time, the giving comes first, though they are simultaneous in eternity, where they cannot be separated. When you have learned they are the same, the need for time is over. Eternity is one time, its only dimension being always. This cannot mean anything to you until you remember God's open arms and finally know his open mind. Like him, you are always in his mind and with a mind like his. In your open mind are your creations in perfect communication, born of perfect understanding. Could you but accept one of them, you would not want anything the world has to offer. Everything else would be totally meaningless. God's meaning is incomplete without you, and you are incomplete without your creations. Accept your brother in this world and accept nothing else, for in him you will find your creations because he created them with you. You will never know that you are co-creator with God until you learn that your brother is co-creator with you. And that is the conclusion of this section. Let's go ahead and move into a silent meditation. What a beautiful section. The acceptance of your brother. That's section six. Now let's go ahead, back, sit up with your back supported, head and neck free. Let's start with a 2x breath in through the nose for a count of two, out through the mouth for a count of four. Now let's move to a 3x breath in through the nose for a count of three, out through the mouth for a count of six. Let's do this three times. Now in for a count of four, exhale for a count of eight.
Now let's come to our senses. Feel what you feel in your body. Any tightness. Go ahead and loosen, release all the tension and stress. Do you feel any itches or cold or warm sensations? Now let's taste what you taste in your mouth. And let's hear what we hear. What do you hear closest to you and what do you hear that is furthest away? And with your eyes closed, see what you see through your eyelids, any patterns of lights, any dark spots. What do you see through your eyelids? And lastly, with a big 4x breath in through the nose, let's smell what you smell. Just sit with your eyes closed. Salvation is my only function here. This is the thought whose function is to save by giving you its function as your own. Salvation is your function with the one to whom the plan was given. Salvation is my only function here. God still is love. And what is not love is not his will. Turn to him who shares your function him. Here, excuse me. Turn to him who shares your function here and let him teach you what you need to learn to lay all fear aside and know yourself as love, which has no opposite to you, no opposite in you. Salvation is my only function here. Salvation and forgiveness are the same. Forgive what you have made and you are saved. Salvation is my only function here. There is no opposite of love. God still is love, and anything that is not love is not his will. Let us allow him to remove all forms of doubt and fear forever from our minds. Salvation is my only function here.
salvation is my only function here. Your function tells you that you are one. Let all fear be gently laid aside that love may find its rightful place in you and show you that you are the Son of God. Salvation is my only function here. Forgiveness and salvation are the same. Forgive what you have made and you are saved. Salvation is my only function here. Now go ahead and think of three things that you're grateful for. I, for one, am very grateful for this lesson today. And this reading today, both beautiful. Go ahead and feel that gratitude and love in the center of your chest. Go ahead and extend that love and gratitude out into your home and all the people in your home. Now let us extend this love and gratitude out to people maybe who we might not be on the best of terms with. Go ahead and see them bathed in this love and light. See them as as yourself. When you're looking at them, you're looking in a mirror. Let us extend this love further out to the borders of our country and then beyond the borders of our country and even out further. Let's see the entire globe, the entire earth bathed in this light of gratitude and love. What color is this light to you? How pure is it? Is it? Does it have a blue tint or a yellow tint? What is the purest light you can imagine? What does it look like? Go ahead and connect to that light. Make sure you see your whole body covered in it. All this extension is from you. And then we are all joined. We are all one in this beautiful light. Let us go into the world today and remember this truth. Salvation is our only function here. Love is love. This world of pain is not his will. There is no opposite of love. Let us release our hallucinations and allow the healing of the mind, the truth of the mind. You are loved, you are love, and I'm so grateful you're here with me today. Salvation is my only function today. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. We are not separated. We are all one, one in love. Amen.